one part Dark Souls, fold in half a cup of Zelda, heavy dollop of Force Unleashed, blend vigorously. Mm, single player action adventure experience with puzzle solving dungeons and satisfying lightsaber combat? Now that is a tasty milkshake! Game Theory Episode CCCXVII The Force Awakens Goes to sleep, gets back up again, and then gets overanalyzed by MadPat. Brought to you in partnership with EA. Slap that one onto a big picture title screen. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, where, after admittedly a repeated string of defeats trying to predict the movies over on Film Theory, I've decided to throw in the towel and talk about the games over here instead. So, a few weeks ago, Steph and I were brought out to play through three hours of Jedi Fallen Order, a brand new single-player Star Wars adventure. Single player! <laughs> the game, at least what we got to play through, was an absolute blast. It has the dungeon exploration and puzzle solving of Zelda mixed in with the combat and world structure of Dark Souls down to the enemies that respawn when you rest at bonfires, or as they're known in this game, meditation points. How fleets of stormtroopers just suddenly reappear when you decide to pop a squad on the ground for a few minutes is beyond me, let's just chalk that one up to creative license because hey, it is a satisfying gameplay loop so I am not gonna question it. Plus, it all allows me to say that this game is the Dark Souls of Star Wars games and that is neither a cringy statement nor inaccurate because that is literally how the game is structured. But it's not just satisfying from a gameplay perspective either, it also has a canonical story that adheres to the franchise's lore. Set between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope, the game has you playing as Cal Kestis, a Padawan who is thus far managed to survive Order 66, the galaxy-wide extermination of all the Jedi. When a fluke accident exposes your space wizarding abilities, suddenly you're on the run, planet hopping to escape from the hunters the Empire has sent your way. As you travel, not only are you fighting for your life, but you're also trying to complete your training to become a fully-fledged Jedi, which means unlocking new force powers as you go. Now, when we spoke to the devs at the event we were invited to to preview the game, they were pretty tight-lipped about how crazy these force powers would get. But in the time that we had to play, we got to see all your Jedi essentials, like force push, force pull, saber throw, or as I like to call it, laser boomerang. But there was one that stood out in particular to me, force slow. The reasons this power stood out to me during my playthrough were one, you use it constantly for both combat and puzzle solving, but more importantly two, it's not one that shows up all that often in Star Wars media. Jedi Academy, force unleashed, nope and nope. The Super Star Wars series for the SNES NES? That's not force slow you're seeing, that's just the game working to keep up with all the on-screen craziness. Heck, even LEGO Star Wars doesn't have it, and if I've been led to believe the correct thing, you can do anything with LEGOs. So, with it being such a critical piece and unique part of the gameplay, I figured now was my chance to pick apart the science of force slow. Because the implications for how and why it works reveal some very interesting things, not just about the game, but about how the force works as a whole, and how we're a lot closer closer to being Jedi than you might think. No longer, my friends, will we be limited to only using our force powers on automatic sliding doors in a grocery store. These are not the Swiss cake rolls you're looking for. To begin, the choice of Force Slow is interesting as a starter move for Cal since, within the Star Wars Legends lore, it's a dark side ability, at least according to Knights of the Old Republic, the first games in which it appeared. In those Old Republic games, Force Slow is on the continuum with other really scary Force abilities like Force Plague, where you basically poison your target to death without ever touching them. Additionally, Slow tends to be a more advanced power in those other games, requiring significant dark side ability points in in order to execute. Which makes sense, dipping your toes into manipulation of time and space should probably take a little bit of practice. So could all of this mean that our hero Cal isn't quite what he seems, and by the end of this game will be revealed to be some level of Sith Master or descendant of Darth Vader himself? No, no, bad Matt Pat. You know you shouldn't be speculating about anything lore related in this universe. Just gets you into trouble, stick to the science, and move on. Okay, so massive lore reveals aside, what do we know about how Force Slow works? Well, 
in those past games like KOTOR, it's described as a force power that clouds the mind and makes a target's actions unusually sluggish. Now, that would explain our opponent's slow behavior, however, that explanation just doesn't work for what we see throughout Jedi Fallen Order. In the game, force slow not only affects people, but it also affects things. Sure, you're slowing down opponents in combat, but you're also using it for puzzle solving in dungeons and platforming out in the overworld. In other words, you're not using your force powers to cloud the mind of giant drilling pistons that exist on the side of a mountain so that they slow down and you can hop across them. The force is doing something either to you or to the environment around you to make that slowing effect occur. As such, we're gonna need another explanation here, which means it's time to get to the root of the force, one of its foundational elements. Something that takes the space magic and turns it into something real, something physical, something pseudo-scientific. It means we have to talk about midichlorians. While everyone rolls their eyes, yes, midichlorians are still canon to this franchise, and they're one of the only physical links that exist in the lore to ever explain what sets the Jedi apart in an anatomical, physical sense. Here's Qui-Gon Jinn to refresh us on what they are. Midichlorians are a microscopic life form that resides within all living cells, and we are symbionts with them. Without the midichlorians, life could not exist, and we would have no knowledge of the Force. They continually speak to us, telling us the will. The force. Okay, so that quote gives us a lot to work with. They're life forms independent from us, but they live within our individual cells in a mutually beneficial relationship. They're essential for life, and they're also essential for connecting with the force. And that's an important distinction. They are not the force itself. The force is what gives the Jedi his power. It's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us, and penetrates us, it binds the galaxy together. Midichlorians are just a way that we're connected to and tap into that energy. It's also worth noting that, in the lore of the franchise, children who are suspected to be Force-sensitive are tested for the presence of midichlorians on a cellular level. Regular Bantha fodder probably have around 2,000 to 2,500 midichlorians per cell, but Force users could have up to 20,000 midichlorians per cell. So they're working with nearly 10 times the Force-sensing and power power of regular nerf herders. The highest midichlorian count of all time, you guessed it, Anakin Skywalker. Now, the implications of all this information are huge. It means that within the Star Wars franchise, midichlorians are a real biological entity that can be detected, measured, and whose presence directly correlates to the strength of a force power. In the anatomy of a Jedi, midichlorians are like little living Duracell batteries powering up that next force jump. And this isn't just me overthinking things. Midichlorians are based on a true story here. Turns out that sometimes fact is weirder than fiction because George Lucas didn't have to make up the presence of a tiny organism living inside all of our cells and giving us energy. Those things already exist. Lucas based midichlorians on mitochondria, the cellular organelle that you might remember from back in 8th grade biology. Let's face it, it's probably the only cellular organelle that you remember from 8th grade biology simply because it had itself some strong branding. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Suck on that endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi bodies and shoot, there was one more of them that I'm forgetting about. Obviously not nucleus and chloroplasts. Uh, show off your big brain energy and leave it in the comments below. Anyway, this idea that George Lucas was inspired by real life biology has been floating around for years, but finding the actual primary source that proves that he was directly inspired by the mitochondria is actually really hard. It took a lot of digging, but I did eventually find it. According to an interview with George Lucas in an e-online article from May 11th, 1999. Shout out to Wayback Machine for allowing me to access that one. He said this, quote, I would say, more than anything else, I'm taking the idea of symbiotic relationships and trying to demonstrate it in a more concrete way. Mitochondrians, yeah, the interviewer actually completely missed the boat on that one. Mitochondrians are a loose depiction of mitochondria, which are necessary components for cells to divide. They probably had something, which will come out someday to do with the beginnings of life, and how one cell decided to become two cells with a little help from this other little creature who came in, without whom life couldn't exist. They are necessary for us. We are necessary for them." End quote. From there, as the story goes, Lucas took the name of mitochondria and fused it together with the word chloroplast to give an answer for what powers all of the Jedi's force abilities, midi 
Chlorians. But it's not just the name and the vague concept of being a powerhouse that connects the dots here. Mitochondria also have their own DNA, meaning that they're just their own organism that lives inside our own cells, in a symbiotic relationship just like the midichlorians. And can I just stop and talk about how weird science is for a minute? Our cells are made up of atoms, right? And atoms are, no joke, like 99.9999999999996% empty space. But then it goes further, right? Electrons in separate atoms can't touch each other because the negative charges repel one another, right? So we're never able to actually physically touch another thing despite it feeling like we're touching other things in the world. And our cells have little smaller cellular creatures living inside of them. So as a human, we are truly a vacuum of empty space that can never touch anything and we're home to trillions of other cells that have united together to build us a human. Basically a glorified apartment building for tiny microscopic organisms. It is just weird. I mean, like, sure, the force is cool and all that, but real life is just wacky when you think about it. But I digress in a big way. Back on track here. Mitochondria can be measured in a blood count, just like midichlorians. They're essential for life and responsible for being energy sources for the body. Again, just like midichlorians. And they exist in every person, just like midichlorians exist in every individual. To quote from Dave Filoni, showrunner for Star Wars Rebels, in an interview he did with the Fangirls Gone Rogue podcast. Anything I do with the Force is just, you know, an extension of talks that I have with George. When I was a kid, I believed that probably everybody had the Force and they just didn't believe. Midi-chlorians actually proves that theory out. We all have it, we just have it to differing degrees. So what does any of this have to do with my initial question about the Force slow? Well, consider this. Maybe Force slow isn't so much about making someone else slow, but instead is about making you really fast. Suddenly your movement and reaction speed are accelerated, making the world around you appear slower relative to your own perception. Think about The Matrix's bullet time, or Spider-Man's spider sense, or Quicksilver's everything in the X-Men movies. That was would help explain how both people and machines suddenly appear to move at a snail's pace. As we just established, the Force is a biologically attuned, energy-based aura. Technically speaking, it shouldn't have any sort of impact on inanimate objects. But if a heated battle suddenly requires a massive burst of energy and power, that can all be explained by the powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondria. Or, if we're talking about the powerhouse of the Force, the midichlorians. And you know how we just discussed that everyone in Star Wars has midichlorians, but Jedi have about 10 times more? Well, get this. It's been clearly shown that athletes have significantly more mitochondria than non-athletes. When we worship NBA players or marvel at Elliot Kipchoge's under two-hour marathon, we're really worshiping their gazillion mitochondria that's allowing them to make those sick dunks and whatever the marathon equivalent of a sick dunk is. They have more mitochondria, meaning that they have more stores of energy coursing through their body allowing them to perform near super superhuman feats. Midichlorians, as the powerhouse of the Force, could explain how Force users would be able to literally run faster and jump higher than your run-of-the-mill stormtrooper, as well as explain how Cal's able to pull off the Force slow ability that we see in the game. With up to 20,000 Energizer Force batteries per cell helping him to move at incredibly fast speeds, he moves so incredibly quickly that the world around him slows relative to his tremendous momentum. In fact, non-athletes have a similar number to the midichlorian number of regular people, again, up to about 2,000 per cell. Highly trained athletes can have double this number, whereas Jedi have about 10 times the number of a normal person. But then again, Jedi are able to jump like 10 times higher than a regular athlete, so maybe it's all proportional. But where this midichlorian mitochondria connection gets even cooler is how we're able to tap into it. Mitochondria counts can be increased over time with athletic training, allowing you to learn new skills, run faster, jump higher, essentially level up your athleticism, especially with endurance activities like marathon running. This corresponds directly with the idea that the longer you train in the force, the more skilled you become, potentially because you can grow your midichlorians in the same way that you can grow mitochondrion in your own cells. As Dave Filoni goes on to explain in that same interview from the Fangirls Gone Rogue podcast I mentioned earlier, If I train in martial arts, can I learn martial arts? Yes, so I can improve my midichlorian count in that discipline. Will I be as good as Bruce Lee? 
No. Sure, there is going to be an upper limit to what you may be able to do without the natural gift. No amount of me training is going to make me as athletic as star basketball player Carl Anthony Towns. And I'm especially not going to be as tall. But I can still get closer to his Jedi-like basketball powers if I just set my mind to it. It's exactly like we see with the Force. And get this, the presence of mitochondria is linked to aging, with fewer mitochondria leading to a faster aging process, which could potentially explain why longtime Force users like Yoda are able to live to be extremely old. He was 900 when he disappeared in the original trilogy, after all. The midichlorian-mitochondrian connection could solve that part of the Jedi lore, too. The long and short of this is that Jedi Fallen Order, and all of Star Wars canon, quite honestly, has been playing a Jedi mind trick on you. There's actual science behind all of this stuff. Force slow could in fact mean force fast. The midichlorians, or mitochondria, call it whatever you want, suddenly get themselves supercharged, filling nearly every cell in your body with increased energy. Your senses heighten, your energy spikes, and you're in the zone, able to sense and react to everything around you just like it's happening in slow motion, and you don't have to take my word for it. The athletes talk about being in the zone, and they'll say, well, I've only ever been in the zone twice my entire sports professional career. Jedi are in the zone way more often than not, but they're exceptional, and it takes training and discipline. Without these things, it's dangerous. So if you want to be more than just a grocery store Jedi, get out there, go to a gym, increase your mitochondria, I mean, midichlorian count, extend your life, and achieve the space wizard status you were always meant to have. Trust only in the Force. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. And as a quick reminder, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is indeed available right now on Xbox, PC, and PS4. Check it out right now via the link in the top line of the description. And I'll see you all next week for two very special episodes. Ooh, it's super exciting, but until then, remember, may the Force be ever in your favor.